Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Forbes and I'm a forest ecologist. People often ask me, what is forest ecology? Now that's a great question, but it's also a really big topic. So what I've done is put together a series of videos which go through some aspects of forest ecology. In this video, I'm going to talk about the forest microclimate, and then in subsequent videos, I'm going to talk about disturbance in forests and forest regeneration. If you have any questions about this, please get in touch. Please leave me comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, but for now, come with me and we'll go and have a look at forest microclimate. The macroclimate of an area tends to be described by the typical air temperature and rainfall regimes and by the hours of sunshine received. This is how we would describe the climate of the area we live in. However, Forest cover modifies the macroclimate to form what is called a forest microclimate. Now this forest microclimate is a very important part of a forest's ecology. Compared to the surrounding climate, due to the structure of the forest and in particular the forest canopy, the forest microclimate tends to be more moderate in temperature, shadier, more humid and less windy. Think of the forest as being a sheltered site with a climate buffered from its surroundings. So first, let's look at a land area that has no forest. Not long ago, this land supported a radiator pine plantation. But now that has been harvested, the sheltered forest understory has been transformed into very exposed conditions, which do not really differ from the surrounding macroclimate. The ground receives full sunlight and is exposed to the wind. Because there is lots of light, the site isn't well suited to our temperate rainforest species which have evolved to thrive in the shelter of taller forest stands. So the species we find where we have no forest microclimate tend to be fast growing and relatively short lived. Here we have exotic grass species, short lived exotic herbs and only a few native shrub species. One particularly successful native shrub that is flourishing in these exposed conditions is Poroporo. Poroporo does an excellent job of establishing following disturbance and grows rapidly. Species like Poroporo are important for the development of our forest ecosystems as they rapidly create the shelter and shade which is needed for the next wave of more shade tolerant plant species to establish. We call this progression forest succession, but we will touch on this further in a later video. So now that we have looked at a site that only has the very beginnings of a forest microclimate developing, let's look at what a forest microclimate actually looks like and how this helps to shape the forest. Now we are in the forest, we have the shelter of the forest around us. The light is filtered by the canopy and by the multiple layers of vegetation in the forest understory. Due to the forest vegetation, the air tends to be cooler, or at least more stable in temperature, and there is more moisture in the soil and air and less wind. The plants we find within the forest are well adapted to the shade and shelter associated with the forest microclimate. Here we have kawakawa, which requires shelter to establish and thrive. Also, Karaka is regenerating on the forest floor. This is another species that will only regenerate if the forest microclimate is sufficiently intact. When canopy trees die, this opens up a canopy gap, altering the microclimate in that location and leading more light into the forest. This also helps drive forest regeneration, but there is more on this dynamic in the following video. Now if we go to the forest edge, the forest canopy is still shading the ground and the species we see is shade loving. But as soon as we go beyond the forest edge, look what happens. We have lost the forest microclimate and we are back to dominance by light demanding, fast growing species such as this exotic grass. So the forest microclimate indicates the integrity of the forest. If the canopy is nice and intact, like the site we have looked at, and if the forest is large, then we can expect the canopy to create a forest microclimate and this will help shape which species can be found in the forest. So if you are thinking about the ecology of forests, remember that forests have a way of modifying the climate to form a microclimate, which in turn provides the conditions for the forest to be self-sustaining. Thanks very much for joining me on this session on forest microclimates. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you know people that might like this video, please share it with them. And be sure not to miss another episode by subscribing to this channel. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time.